Well, um, our two countries have had a very long relationship uh, spanning over 300 years. And uh, the relationship has been healthy. Uh, we want to take it to higher heights. We want to deepen this relationship. We want to widen that, this relationship for the benefit of our two countries. Um, of course, we share a lot in common today in terms of uh, politics, in terms of the economy, in terms of the um, challenges we face as, as leaders. So we are trying to, we have compared notes and we have identified areas where we can work together, share contacts and share ex our experiences. This is basically what this uh, meeting has been about. I think my, my friend have said it all. It's all about uh, our relationship, especially at the bilateral level. I think it is very, very important. Gambia, our policy is we want to open up to the world, and this is part of what we are doing. And also we seize the opportunity also to thank Sierra Leone, because during the impasse, Sierra Leone they took a leading role in solving the problem in the Gambia. I think we needed to commend them for that and thank them also. Uh, and also we discuss about the leadership. In Africa, if you look at the leadership, we have a young leadership. And that young leadership, they have a big responsibility in moving this country, continent forward. I think these are basically the areas that we discuss. Um, the areas we have discussed, education, of course. A lot of Gambians have passed through Sierra Leone as far as education is concerned. And there are other areas also, trade, trade and investment. These are areas we want to cooperate in uh, moving this relationship forward. Because we know very well Sierra Leone have a lot of resources. I think if we are in partnership, that will help us in this relationship. And both countries can benefit uh, from that relationship. These are the areas we, we discuss. In, in, in addition, Gambia does very well in tourism. There's a lot to learn from Gambia. And uh, I think uh, in West Africa, Gambia is one of the favorite destinations for tourism, for tourists. So we are also trying to learn from the Gambia what, what has been put in place in terms of infrastructure to attract tourists here. Of course, education has always been a force, uh, a binding force between our two countries. And uh, we are happy that a lot of progress has been made on this side. We don't have a lot of Gambians going on that side again for education. But most of us have colleagues here we went to school with who are Gambians and we want to see what sort of, um, uh, how we can strengthen that relationship also at the educational level. Fisheries, governance and a lot of other issues uh, 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 we have discussed are of importance to us because we know that when you compare notes, there are always uh, differences but you learn from, from, from what is happening uh, at different ends of governance in the two countries. I, I, I think so. Africa, we should be very, very hopeful because the dynamics, the dynamics are changing. Because we are confronted with a lot of, lot of challenges. And these challenges could hit us and, and worse. Now the dynamics are changing. Africa is now following the trend of democracy. Rule of law, this is the trend we are now following. So I think that is an indication that Africa is now serious. We are building our institution. And if you build your institution, the institution will dictate everybody. Not the president now, it's important. Not who is in office, but it's the institutions that are very, very important. I think that's what we are doing as, as, as of now. Definitely, yes. Um, as chair of and coordinator of the uh, C10, I have always led the process for advocating for the African common position. That is for us to have two seats at the Security Council level. We've never had prob problems or challenges with the support of uh, the Gambia. So the African common position is what we stand by and we continue to stand by that. We will insist to make sure that the 1.2 billion people in Africa have representation. That is what the African common position is at the highest level, that is at the Security Council level. And uh, the Gambians have been very supportive as a matter of fact, Africa as a whole is supportive of that position. And uh, we just reiterated our, our shared um, 
um, um, opinion about that to continue to, to, to make sure that we advocate for that position and make sure that it actually happens within the, the Security Council of the UN. I think Africa is speaking with one voice. The message is the same from Africa. We are all united as far as that message is concerned. Reforms of the Security Council. That is a message that is clear and it was even part of my speech when I was at the United Nations. Reforms of the Security Council, that's what we are calling for. We are calling for, for equality. We want Africa to be recognized. We want Africa to be given position as far as the Security Council is concerned. <coughs> you know, for, for, for accountability, for transparency, you understand, for fairness. I think this, uh, this, is, this is the message from Africa. And everybody is on board. That makes us strong. Because we feel that if we are together, we are strong. The message is the same. Everybody is speaking the same language. Well, uh, I think uh, we've had uh, different experiences and it is always good to use your experiences as a way to chart the future. We decided to have the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and um, people took part in that. I was there myself and uh, the recommendations of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission have been properly documented and has guided us to, to be able to move forward as far as um, development is concerned in that country. Uh, it actually acts as a guardrail to make sure that we don't go back into the bad habits that led to the war, the causes of the war, uh, like bad governance, injustice, corruption. So in fact, corruption, the Human Rights Commission and the, the Anti-Corruption Commission, the Human Rights Commission are all as a result of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which um, actually recommended that in order not to go back to war, we needed to make sure that we have systems and um, institutions in place that we prevent like uh, my brother and colleague said, institutions, not individuals, because we come and go. But the institutions are there to make sure that we stay within the confines of uh, what, what is generally accepted around the world to make sure that nobody's human rights uh, is abused and that, that uh, good governance is, uh, the, uh, is the norm. And also to make sure that um, uh, we, we honor the democratic responsibility which, uh, and accountability make sure that uh, we account for monies that are given to us or we take charge of. Yeah, I think uh, we have discussed these things that Gambia should learn from Sierra Leone. After a bitter war, they were able to reconcile and move on. I think we have a lot to learn. We passed through a dictatorship of 22 years. Our democracy have just started, and Sierra Leone, they are building on their democracy. Governments have changed hands in about two to three times. So that means Sierra Leone is accepting democracy. I think this is the only way we can move this continent forward. And Gambia, we should learn from those people that have moved on. Countries like South Africa, Sierra Leone, countries like Rwanda, they have moved on. And I see no reason why Gambia, we cannot move on. But our main focus is to build our institution, as I said. The Truth and Reconciliation is on. Constitutional Review Commission is on. These are reform process to change the mindset. Because the mindset is a big problem. The system was polluted. And in changing that, you have to change the mindset. Well, today we have a guide that is our national development plan. Everybody, even the primary school student, knows about the national development plan. That is the guide for the government. That guide is up to 2021. I think all of this is inclusive in that national development plan. So these are the things that we are, we are focused on, but we are still more than willing to learn from other countries. They said if you learn, if you learn and listen, you can always progress. So we cannot thank uh, Mother Bio enough for coming to the Gambia. He is a brother and he is a friend. We have a lot to learn from Sierra Leone. That's why today we are here together to share experiences and learn from each other and collaborate also and move our continent forward. But we are very hopeful because Africa now the direction is the same. Everybody is thinking about good governance, everybody is thinking about democracy. This is the only way we can move this continent forward. Because the other countries that have succeeded, America, you know, the West, they follow the same trend. So we have to follow the same to succeed. But it's a young leadership and I think 
this leadership, we are very, very innovative. Innovative in such a way that we want to develop this country. And nobody can do it for us. It's our ultimate responsibility. And we have no excuse. Now we have capacity. All of you are highly educated people. So I think the media also is doing a big, big job. You know, so, and, and I think that is healthy. It's healthy for democracy. So thank you very much once more again uh, for coming. We are really pleased and we are excited. Uh, Mother Biot, once more again, I thank you for coming to the Gambia. Looking forward to seeing you again.